Marvellous. Thank you. Thank you. I am very good, thank you. Good. Uh, well, you've got players coming back from all over. Uh, is, is there someone back fit? I think you can still believe perhaps a, a Ben Chilwell, Edward Mendy, and Captain Martin. Is everyone back well? Um, Mendy won't be fit for the match tomorrow. Um, we hope the injury is not too long. Uh, Thiago Silva, after his trip um, and, and back, is uh, is not is not unfit, but he's not ready to play the game because of the, the travelling and the game that he played. Um, so he won't be in the squad. Ben Chilwell is in the squad. Um, so he's got over some of the feeling he had uh, which took him out of the England squad around uh, the injury that he has, has had for a while now. Um, Christian Pulisic is in the squad and fit to, to play. Hakim Zayic is in the squad, um, not fit to start but fit to participate some minutes we hope. Um, and I'm trying to think if I've missed anyone out there. You let me know if there's someone you want. Uh, look, does, does that mean the Kettle will play golf? Um, I'll make that decision um, myself out of the goalkeepers um, for tomorrow. And as far as Hakim Zayic is concerned, you want, you want to give him some minutes. Um, he's finally ready to, to make his debut. How excited are you at, at that prospect and seeing him on the, the pitch at the centre man as Werner and Hammond? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm obviously, we brought Hakim here and it feels like a long time ago now, but he also has not played since the Dutch league finished during uh, lockdown periods. It's a long time and he's worked so hard. He's been fantastic in terms of his professionalism to get fit um, and looks really good in training and it's match fitness. I've got a really open relationship with him to know where he's at and how I feel about it. So just game minutes are what we need now. But yes, of course, I'm excited to get him in and around it to, to bring what we brought him to the club for, which is, you know, the the opportunity to create chances for us, to, to be a, a talented player that he is, that we saw at Ajax. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing him play. It's the first opportunity we have to speak to you since um, Abraham and Richard Wall were at the gathering of late. Surely it shouldn't have been that. Um, I wonder what you make of that. And with the training ground now in an area facing increased restrictions because of COVID, have you reminded them and the rest of your players about adhering to the rules? Yeah, well, I mean, we've lived in this bubble, as we call it here, for quite a long time now. And we have to make sure we stay on point with that at the training ground. The players also have a responsibility, as to the public now, to, to follow the, the rules that we are being told, albeit they're not always massive clarity in them, but that's not an excuse for the lads. They made mistakes. Uh, I remind them of their responsibilities. And from the, the conversation I had with them, they were... Um, uh, say innocent mistakes, mistakes, but they understood their mistakes, and we move on. and uh, And I hope and I expect that it, that it won't happen again. Last one, please, Ian. Uh, it's been quite a week off the pitch. Uh, put a big picture has started to come and gone. The EFL has rejected the uh, Premier League's financial package for the in the city. There's been disagreements uh, among those at the top of the FA and um, the EFL. There's calls for an independent body for football governance. In, in a way, um, is football at the top the way it's run in a bit of a mess right now? And is an independent body perhaps the way forward? Well, I won't use the word mess, but I think if you look across society and you look what COVID's done to the world, we're all in you know diff difficult, difficult times. So I, I don't want to be too critical for that because I think people are trying to find solutions all the time. Um, with, with the actual football picture, I, I haven't paid enough attention to it and to give you details to know exactly how we move forward because I've been concentrating on the, the Southampton game over this last week. I've read headlines without reading details. So I'd hate to comment too much on that. All I can say is from Chelsea's side, as we've remained, I think, since the beginning of the lockdown with some of the great work Chelsea did, we're certainly intent on making sure that we help protect or are involved in conversations around protecting the football pyramid as such from grassroots all the way up to EFL and Premier League towards the Premier League that we can. We'll be very um, involved in those conversations when needed and as we always are and, and try and do the best. I can't comment on too much of the other talk that's going on other than hoping that we do find something that supports that football pyramid that I talk about. John Southall, Five Live. Thank you, William. Hi John, hi. Uh, it seems ages, doesn't it, since we played a Premier League game. What, do you, what have you made of the, the start of the Premier League season? We've, we've had a ludicrous number of goals, we've had some ridiculous results. Why, why do you think it's been like I think there's probably a lot of reasons for it. Um, it's the Premier League, the most competitive league in the world, and we can't treat any 
team um, with, with ease or I have a feeling that you're going to have a, an e- a comfortable game in the Premier League. It's been shown too many times. We had that at West Brom with a, a difficult start that we clawed back. Other teams have found out in their own ways. I think there's probably um, the short pre-season it definitely feels like it had an effect to us and I think it would have affected other teams. Time to work on a training run is crucial, particularly with squads that are bringing in new players. Uh, trying to work on basic ideas or trying to you know tighten up or become more fluid these things only come from the training ground in general so um, I certainly feel that's had a big factor maybe now with the two weeks break players are getting fitter playing for their countries if they have or if not they've been here trying to get fitter and ready Um, so you know maybe we'll see things change slightly but we can't take away the fact that this Premier League is is always going to throw up surprises. You spoke about players coming back. Tony Rudiger played all three games for Germany in the uh, in the international break. Um, he's obviously still in your thoughts, but can he play his way back into your starting eleven? How difficult a, a journey is it going to be back for him? Uh, is he in the squad tomorrow? Every every player can play their way into the starting eleven, the the squad. Um, that's in every player's hands. That's how I I try and work here. Is how I work. Is that I. Things I do are always for the best of the team in terms of best for the club because we're trying to get results every week. So the players all know that. And uh, the beauty of the window now being shut um, is that we can get to work and know what the squad is. Everybody knows that they can contribute and we will need them and rely on them because the amount of games we play and Tony's the same as every other player on that one. I know international breaks can be difficult, but can, I mean, did you, when you were a player, can it help a player when they come back and you think of players like Mason, Matt, Reese, James, they, do you get extra confidence when you play with England and you come back to your club and spring in your step? Did you find that? I think at times you can find that, yeah. I think there's definitely some worth in that, in that idea. I thought Reese had a fantastic debut. Mason gets his goal and contributed, you know, in those two games that he played. Um, and I, I think I come back to a point I made before, though, is that, that where players have not really had pre-season games, have had enough minutes on the pitch, I'm actually happy. Sometimes you might... You know, want to bemoan the fact that a player might go away and play three ninety minutes or big minutes in games when they're away because you're kind of selfish and want them for Chelsea. At the moment, our players need games, so I'm pleased with the ones that have played. Liam Trumi, Athletic. Hi, Frank. Hi, Liam. Um, with Christian and Hakeem now ready to play, um, is the bigger challenge for you to, to, to try and find the right balance of, of all these attacking players or is the bigger challenge for them individually to convince you that, that they deserve to be part of the starting unit? Well, I think any any team that wants to compete um, at the top towards the top of the league or Champions League and play in the FA Cup and go through a season needs more than a, you know, a one-player per position. It needs to be competitive across the front area. We had it Last year, we lost William, um, we lost Pedro, we lost Batshuayi. So we've brought in players that, that brings us the same um, level of competition in terms of numbers. And I feel like the quality levels and some of the options we brought in, of course, you bring them in because you want to improve. So um, it, it's up to the players, of course. It'll always remain up to them in terms of their performance. And at the same time, it gives me nice problems in terms of we can hopefully be selecting uh, players, we can use them through the season, we'll have options to come off the bench. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what you, some people might want to call a problem in that area. OK, last question, Nick Puel. Hi Frank, thanks for your time. Um, okay. well, obviously, you know, he's obviously going to need time to get um, to, to full sharpness and everything, but with the blend of him, Pulisic and, and the other guys in there, is that going to add an extra dimension, you know, creativity and vision-wise that we haven't seen yet? And obviously we haven't seen it for the obvious reasons of, you know, you've talked about with the, no pre-season and injury, etc. Yeah, I think there's been a culmination of things that, w- that work. If you're bringing in um, players, and we brought in some players, I know other teams have in the Premier League, but you're always looking to build relationships over the pitch, whether it be full-backs and wingers, strikers and people playing behind them, midfield players as combinations, centre-backs, goalkeeper with his back four. I think those things can only be worked on. And I think with the when we didn't have a lot of these players fit or ready, the ones that we brought in, and now we're seeing that they're starting to get fit, we get some time on the training ground, the relationships on and off the pitch can grow. So I hope that we'll keep working. We've got a lot of work to do. We are not the uh, the end product. There are other teams that showed last year and the last two or three years how long it takes, the work that it takes to become top teams in the world. And we have to do it in our own way. And we're at pretty much the start of that journey in a lot of ways. So um, the work has begun and it continues all the time to keep trying to improve. Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section. So we'll have...